Right here on the table, we have two new CPUs introduced in the Threadripper lineup from AMD. This is the 2920X with its 12 cores and 24 threads coming in at 650 US dollars or if you're in Australia, 1019 AUD. Comes with a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a turbo of 4.3 gigahertz. And then they've got the 2970WX. 24 cores, 48 threads coming in at 1300 US dollars or in Australia 2040 AUD with a base clock of 3 gigahertz on all cores and turbos up to 4.2 gigahertz. However, how do these compare against the current stack of Threadripper chips out there? Namely the 2950X with its 16 cores and 32 threads and also the 2990WX with its 32 cores and 64 threads. Well today we're going to take these four Threadripper CPUs and compare it against the 2700X and also the 9900K and the 79 80XE and also overclock them to what I consider generalized overclock levels to find out how well they perform in both productivity and gaming benchmarks. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and right here on the test bench we are using ASRock boards across the whole lineup whether it be the Fatality or Gaming lineup. On the X399 specifically we use the Fatality Gaming board with a quad channel memory with 32 gigabytes of Flarex, 3200 megahertz, CL14 timings. On the dual channel configuration we still used uh, the same four sticks but of course it will be in dual channel configuration. We used an NMAX cooler on the Threadripper chips and then for the Corsair chips we used the H15i Pro. Anyway, pulling up those productivity scores first for you guys, we have the Blender results showing what the best case scenario for the Threadripper chips can be in an application that can utilize all those cores and threads with the 2990WX coming out in front followed by the 2970WX. Uh, Intel's chip, the 7980XE, still is performing quite well, slotting into the results quite nicely, but I feel like the 2920X and also the 2950X kind of represent a bit better value for money here. Uh, and then of course the 9900K and also 2700X still doing very well. Moving across now to Adobe Premiere Pro, which does paint a different picture, which is gonna be important in the conclusion of today's video, because we can see here that the Intel CPUs are winning in terms of their core and thread count. And this is because Intel have put money into Adobe for them to optimize their software for Intel CPUs. AMD CPUs are still yet to catch up with the 2950X pretty much being the max uh, utilization of cores and threads here. After this, the 24 core and also the 32 core WX variants don't really take advantage of those extra core and thread counts. So essentially if you're buying one of these WX chips for the Adobe suite, You'd be wasting your money in my opinion. Then move over to Cinebench, which is the multi-threaded benchmark. Showcases the max theoretical performance of these chips. 2990WX does do very well. Then the 2970WX and also the other Threadripper chips do scale in tandem to the amount of cores and threads they have. Uh, moving over across to the single-threaded benchmarks, this is where the Intel chips do pull ahead, especially in the case of the 9900K with its higher single-threaded clock speed, as well as a slightly better IPC. And then moving across to V-Ray, another CPU simulated benchmark. This is where the Threadripper, also the WX and even the X variants do score very well in relation to their core and thread counts with the 2990WX coming out on top, followed by the 2970WX. And then onto the last of the benchmarks here, which does paint an important picture in relation to the WX versus the X chips. And this is the compression benchmark where we can see the 2950X and also the 2920X pulled ahead of the higher core and thread count WX brothers. And this is because they both utilize quad channel memory. And in the case of the WX chips, they link the dies together and they leach two channels off of two die as opposed to the X variants, which leach two channels off of one die. So we can see here the memory is a limiting factor on the WX in certain benchmarks. And it can be to the point where it actually bottlenecks the WX chips and they perform less than the lower core and thread count variants. This has to do with the higher core count and threads being hungry for that information, but being limited to the amount of data they can pull through the memory itself. The Intel chips and also the 2700X do quite well in this benchmark. And then we move over to the decompression benchmarks. And this is where I feel the 2970WX does very well, uh, where the extra cores and threads on the 2990WX don't do as well in relation to the 2970WX. So it is good to see the 24 core 48 threaded chip doing very well in this benchmark, as well as the Threadripper and AMD chips in general pulling some really high numbers. So now we have finished the productivity benchmarks, we'll quickly sum up what's happening here. The WX chips are mainly for specific applications that can utilize all those cores and all those threads, and that quad channel memory isn't gonna limit all those cores and all those threads. 
So if you're this person looking for this CPU and you know you can utilize that extra power, then one of these CPUs will represent good value for money. But I feel like for most people, especially power users, whether you're using the Adobe suite or you're streaming, gaming, and doing a lot of tasks at the same time, I feel like the 2950X does represent the best value here. And I feel like the 2920X here, and also the 2970WX for that matter, are a little bit overshadowed by their higher core count variant brothers, which scale in a linear price range. So you're not getting rewarded for having those cut down cores on the Threadripper dies in this case. Usually when it comes to CPUs that are at the absolute top and they have that flagship CPU, they usually command a premium for getting the most performance out of them. And also when we compare this linear pricing structure of the 2920X to the 2950X, and also the 2970WX to the 2990WX, I feel like you're not getting rewarded for missing out on those cut down dies. And that usually you get a discount, whether it be a GPU or a uh, CPU, in the case of, for instance, an RX 570 versus an RX 580, you're getting a more of a discount, but you're not getting the performance cut that you would in that price differential, if this is making any sense. And then we've got the other costs associated with that as well, the X399 boards, the coolers, and all that other jazz, which then brings the total build cost in favor of getting the 2950X or getting the 2990WX. And then of course we have the Intel counterparts, which we'll talk about that later in the conclusion after we roll the gaming benchmarks. First up here we had CSGO, 1080p lowest settings. This is mainly for competitive gamers who need a ridiculously high draw frame and they don't mind playing at low res. Apparently that helps them see enemies easier. And so in this case, the 9900K is doing the best here, but all the other chips are still doing very well. You're gonna be able to competitively game on all these chips shown in the graph. And then when we move it up to 1440p, we can see the results really come down to a small differential here. And that if you're like me and you like playing with higher graphical settings on higher res monitors and want to enjoy yourself, then it's not really going to matter which CPU you pick out of this bunch. Moving to Assassin's Creed Origin, however, does paint a little bit of a different scenario where the 2700X out of AMD's lineup is performing the best and then the Threadripper chips don't do as well. The Intel CPUs uh, are coming out in top with the 9900K coming out best here. And then moving over to 1440p, just like CSGO, saw the difference being cut down yet again. And then moving over to Dota 2, probably one of the most competitive games with the biggest prize pool in terms of tournaments. Uh, getting high FPS here is pretty important, but the game is capped at 240 FPS. So what we saw at 1080p lower settings was the 9900K doing well, and also all the other chips were doing very well too. And then going to 1440p, the RTX 2080 Ti was not being held back pretty much at all besides some 1% uh, lows, which did throw out uh, the numbers just by a little bit compared to 1080p lower settings. Uh, but it is important to note that these differences, again, are on a 2080 Ti, which is pretty much the best gaming graphics card out there, not to mention it's the Strix model, which does perform very well. Anyway, the last of the gaming benchmarks is GTA 5, where at 1080p lower settings, the uh, numbers on the 9900K with such high FPS actually affects this to the point where it's apparently breaking the engine of the game and that causes the 1% lows to be lower due to induced stuttering. The other chips here do very well, very smooth experience scoring better 1% lows. Then moving up to 1440p higher settings, we see the differences are cut down dramatically to the point where you're gonna have a good experience on all of these CPUs regardless of what GPU you have. And now here we are with conclusion time with the four Threadripper chips on the table, also some Intel counterparts. When will you wanna go with AMD? When will you wanna go with Intel? Well, as we've seen with the graphs and then we look at the pricing structure, the AMD Threadripper chips represent phenomenal value for money through and through. Then you look at the Intel counterparts that do have their merits as well. If you're looking for something that'll do well in the Adobe suite, or if you're looking for something that's gonna be the best a competitive gaming CPU, then the 7980XE and also the 9900K are going to do very well, but they are expensive chips, at least compared to the AMD counterparts. Uh, but when we look at the 2920X and the 2970WX, we can see that they're stuck in this weird juxtaposition compared to the other chips, the big brothers, namely, in their pricing structure. And this is what sort of puts me off a little bit with these chips. I mean, if you know that you need this amount of cores and this amount of threads for that application, and you're gonna utilize this value for money out of these chips, then go for it. But if you're looking for sort of the best in slot CPU for your X399 board, then I'd either go with the 2950X or the 2990WX. That's just my opinion, because you don't get a discount with the 2920X or the 2970WX 
for losing those cores and threads. It's in a linear pricing structure, and since you're already getting a motherboard and a big cooler and a power supply and all that other jazz, I think you would be better suited in my opinion with going with that bigger brother and getting that better performance, whether it be the best in slot quad channel memory 16 core chip, the 2950X, or the best in slot 32 core 64 threaded AMD 2990WX. They're my two choices coming out of this. And then there may be the argument of, well, I need more PCIe lanes and they offer 64 PCIe lanes, which is a great benefit of the Threadripper chips. But if you need that many PCIe lanes and you don't care for the performance of the CPU too much, then the 1900X still represents phenomenal value for money. That's coming in at under 400 US dollars and still gives you access to all those PCIe lanes. So that may be a CPU that you may wish to consider if you need that 64 lanes of PCIe usage. But throwing another curveball into this conclusion makes it a little bit difficult here because the 2920X, I do like it if you are into a placeholder CPU. For instance, if you can pick up a cheap X399 board that's still a very good quality and you wanna hold out for the seven nanometer chips, then this uh, 12 core 24 threaded CPU definitely could be for you. I do like it in that sense. It's the cheapest 2000 series chip. And in my opinion, I like the CPUs on the 2000 lineup, whether it be Ryzen or Threadripper, a lot more than the 1000 series. I think AMD's done a great job in reducing the latencies. So that may be one reason why you'd wanna go with the 2920WX uh, chip if you are in the market for it. But when we compare them to the Intel counterparts, AMD Threadripper and also Ryzen chips represent phenomenal value for money through and through. Uh, but one more elephant in the room I guess people are gonna bring up is the overclocking on these chips. When it comes to workstations and overclocking, I have my workstation here, it's overclocked. I overclock it in the winter, the summer, it doesn't matter. I always get stable overclocks because I've got good gear and I know how to get those stable overclocks without inducing crashing on my machines. But anyway, in the case of today's video, I took these CPUs to what I consider safe and decent overclocks, and they're generalized overclocks. And uh, maybe the 9900K is a little bit aggressive at five gigahertz, but keep in mind, this is stable, and what I've got here is apparently a silicon loser, and at least when I compare it to what other people are getting. Uh, but regardless, that aside, if you are on a workstation and you are a single end user, then I recommend overclocking. People have uh, critiqued me in the comments and laughed at me even for having a workstation that's overclocked. But I've been using this thing and all my rigs before it in the last few years and they've all been overclocked and I've managed to get 4K videos done day in, day out. And the benefits of overclocking versus not overclocking has saved me a lot of time. So I'd recommend it to anyone if you have good gear and you can take some time out to learn the settings, which will end up saving you a lot of time in the long run, especially if you wish to keep these CPUs for a few years. But do keep in mind, of course, the negative of overclocking is that you will get increased power consumption. And as we can see with all these seven chips that we've tested here today, the power consumption does go up with overclocking. And in the case of the WX chips, they do start to balloon out a bit. So you will wanna get a really good cooler, really good power supply and really good motherboard if you do wish to overclock any of these chips uh, seen on the desk here. I'd say the 2700X is sort of an exception. You can get this out of the box with a B350 motherboard even to very good levels and it won't use a whole lot of power. Anyway, in a nutshell, I do like the 2920X and also the 2970WX. I just feel like they're a little bit overshadowed by the linear pricing structure. For instance, I would like to see the 2920X uh, dropped from 650 US dollars to say 600 or even 550 US dollars and then the 2970WX from 1300 to 1200 US dollars. I think this would represent a great value for money proposition and would reward people for taking the cut down dies and getting that extra value for money. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below which chip would you go for out of the Threadripper lineup or would you just go with a 2700X or a 9900K? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And also if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, might wanna get some Tech yes City merch. Or if you enjoy the content coming out every single day, you might want to jump on the Patreon bandwagon for as little as a dollar a month. You can get access to behind the scenes vlogs and also some special Discord privileges. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.